Oh no, no, no. I immediately realized that the odor was very similar to what we noticed when we entered the bunker for the very first time, only much, much stronger. My Geiger counter started clicking too. What's going on? asked Alex. This guy, Moroz, he told me about this. He told me to run, I said. Just as he finished, the door shook in an enormous slam, sending dust flying in the air and slightly bending outwards. There was nowhere to run. We had a heavy steel door on one side and God knows what on the other. I had no idea how we could survive. Luckily, Alex had. Do you still have the rope? He asked. Without hesitation, he tied it around one of the pumps. It wasn't easy at first, working with the rope with my hands shaking violently, but then another loud slam echoed throughout the room. One of the bolts that held the door was launched across the room. I felt a wave of cold run down my spine, and suddenly, I had just this one purpose, to tie the knot. Everything else shut down in my head. I was done and we dropped it down the broken vent that Alex got dragged into before. We stepped inside and started sliding down the rope. I then heard another slam and then what I think was the door hitting the ground. It was through. I slid faster but the rope was starting to burn my hand. I lost the grip and fell down a few meters landing on top of another vent. It broke and I fell through inside another corridor. Alex then landed on top of me. It took us a few moments to get back on our feet. I looked around and saw an orange door titled Decontamination. We were on level three. There was no handle, only a button on the wall next to it. I pressed it and the door opened after a few seconds. We entered a small room with a control panel. Using it, I closed the door behind us. Several jets then blasted us with air, a green light popping up and then Another door in front of us opened, inviting us deeper into the facility. I noticed that the control panel was stained with a smudge of fresh blood. Was Moroz still alive and went through here? We couldn't go back. Our only option was to see how deep the rabbit hole goes. It was supposed to be a clean room, but the place was wrecked even more than the upper levels. After some walking and searching, we found a room that looked like a makeshift infirmary. A few dozens of beds separated with plastic curtains, some medical equipment, some beds still had information clipboards attached. Patient 2. Quarantine. Survey Team C. Patient in coma. Observation only. Do not interfere. Deceased, 728. Cause of death, unknown. Patient 6, quarantine. Survey Team C, patient in coma. Observation only, do not interfere. Deceased, 752. Cause of death, unknown. Patient 19, quarantine. On-site operative assistant. First contact with Survey Team C. Massive blunt force trauma. Chest, suspected internal damage, cranial concussion, suspected damage to cervical spine, dislocated left shoulder, fracture to left humerus, and multiple lacerations on the chest. Deceased at 404. Cause of death, internal hemorrhage. Patient 7. Quarantine. Survey Team C. Patient is psychotic and unresponsive. Mild to moderate frostbite. Observation only. Do not interfere. Termination order. Signed, A. Moroz. There were some body bags on the other side of the room. Empty, we searched the area and eventually ended up in the lower levels of the facility. There was this rotten smell all around. We entered a room and, well... There was a substance everywhere. On the walls, floor, ceiling, everywhere. It was like flesh, with tendrils or veins running across it, like from a dead space game. Then we found bodies attached to it, dozens, shriveled up like dead insects in a spider web. I think we should go back, Alex said anxiously. We turned around and went back, but then I heard some debris shift in the distance in the corridor we came from. Soon enough, one of these things crawled into the light emitted by my flashlight. 
It stood there for a while, staring at us with its blank eyes. Then it leaped forward. It fell to the ground, dead, and an empty shotgun shell followed soon after. I heard more of them making their way towards us in the distance, so we ran deeper into the facility. I shot a few more on my way, but then ran out of ammo. We eventually found a long, dark tunnel flooded with water. The things were almost on us. I could see them crawling along the walls behind us. We entered the tunnel. The water slowed us down considerably, and I awaited the worst, but then I noticed that we weren't followed. They wouldn't go inside the tunnel. We walked for, I don't know, an hour, maybe two. The water was ice cold. Luckily, it was only about knee deep, so it wasn't too terrible. I already said that Alex didn't look well when I found him, but as we walked through, he seemed to be getting worse. He complained that his head hurt, and he felt dizzy. His skin got pale, and he looked very weak. After some time, I had to support him, and later, he completely collapsed and fell unconscious. We couldn't go back, so my only option was to find a way to drag him through the water. It went like this for some time, but then I heard something far away in the direction we came from. A splash. I turned and shined my light into the black tunnel. Nothing. I went to continue walking, but then I heard it again. Hello? I called, hoping to hear an answer. Maybe Morose was here, or did the creatures follow us after all? Nothing. I quickened my pace, but it wasn't easy dragging another person and moving through knee-deep water. The sounds continued. They weren't getting closer or farther. They were just there. Then I reached the end. The tunnel was closed off with another massive steel door and no visible way to open it. It was a dead end. I stopped moving and listened. Those sounds, it wasn't just a splash. It was more like as if someone or something was wading through the water. I panicked and started banging on the door, calling for help. I had nowhere to go. The sounds were now getting closer. I saw waves in the water. It was now very close. I slowly turned again and looked into the tunnel. I saw nothing and heard nothing, just silence and darkness. And then the familiar scent hit my nose. Ozone. Then I heard a metal shift behind me and the door opened. Dimitri, a familiar voice called, Morose. What? Who is? Oh no, you brought it here! He pulled me and Alex through the door and then shut it again as fast as he could. That's your friend? How? What happened to him? He asked as he looked at still unconscious Alex. I don't know, are you okay? I asked back. He had a large gash across his face and his right eye. Well, no thanks to you, he responded. He noticed the makeshift bandage on Alex's arm and unwrapped it. What he had on his arm wasn't just a regular wound, it was a bite mark. That, Moreau said pointing at it, stand back. He stood up and drew his pistol. No, wait! At least tell me what's going on! He's going to be dead in a few minutes. This will make it easier. For him too, but mostly for us. What? Please, is there really nothing else we can do? I pleaded. He looked at me, looked at Alex, and then stood there, thinking for a moment. I was immediately relieved when he holstered his gun again. Okay, this might help him, he asked, and dug up a case with a syringe from his backpack. It looked used recently, and was only about half full with a clear liquid. He injected Alex with the rest of it. It won't matter anyway, he said. What do you mean? Follow me. Take him too if you want, but I'm not carrying him. Like and subscribe for part 7.